I'm Joanna Reed. Uh, I'm a patient at Piedmont Hospital. Today I am undergoing uh, my 34th and 35th surgical procedures. Uh, I've had a variety of surgeries, a lot of them neurosurgeries, brain and spinal, and um, some other types of surgery since I was 15. I'm now 24 years old. Um, I've been in Piedmont for about two weeks now this time, but I think this is my 13th or 14th week in the hospital since January. I'm uh, John David Mullins, a plastic surgeon. I have the pleasure of working with uh, Joanna here for the past several years and uh, managing uh, some of her problems. And it, uh, it, they are unique and challenging, and, but uh, uh, they've all been doing the best they can and we'll continue uh, to try to see this see it through. And it's, I'm one of a large group of people, a large uh, support group, including uh, uh, a lot of different specialists and uh, foremost among those the support group is your family. Well, my experience with Joanna has been one, um, a very interesting journey, a very difficult and challenging one, um, supporting Joanna through this um, healing journey, medical journey. And I say healing because I have every hope that at some point in time, she really will be healed and have some kind of normal life, some time where she can really express herself and all the things that she's learned and be able to be there in the world for um, where she can experience the mission that she thinks that she's meant to have. I've just been so moved and touched by Joanna and her parents and her whole family and all of her friends and kind of the little community that we've all made for each other around her like a it's like a healing circle or something it's really powerful and um, I've never experienced anything like it And how are you involved in this? I am Joanna's husband. And uh, what has it been like? What has it, what has it been like? Um, it has been a marathon. Not a, what has it been like lately, or what has it been like since we met? Well, give us the big picture. The big picture in a nutshell, it has been hard, as you can well imagine, but at the same time, I find that how hard it is is not something that I think about very much when it's all happening, as it has been happening now relentlessly since uh, early November. Um, it's very hard to watch her when she is suffering, more than anything. Um, I wouldn't say it puts a strain on our relationship in any meaningful way, but it does take the fun out of it a lot of the time, especially since we really haven't, uh, we really haven't lived together at all this year. Because uh, even when she's not in the hospital, which is all too rare, um, she's been staying at her parents' house. Uh, which is only 10 minutes away from us, but at the same time I can't be home during the day, and it is what it is. Um, but whenever we are together and spending time together, things are far more normal than one would probably suppose they would be. Um, we laugh, we genuinely try to have fun, even in the worst of circumstances. Um, one example would even be, I think it was a Friday or two ago, um, brought over pizza, she was in the hospital, brought over pizza and a picnic basket and put a movie on my laptop and we curled up in her hospital bed together and watched the movie and things were, it was an altogether almost fun evening quite frankly. You just learn how to get used to it.
and then make the best of it. But you, you bitch and moan, but here you are. So... True. <laughs> the so, truth of the matter was, I wanted every second with him. So there have been a lot of different issues um, with, um, I've had meningitis, uh, I had a nine inch open wound at the back of my head um, where bacteria was getting in and cerebrospinal fluid was leaking out um, and I had exposed dura in the skull back here. So I uh, just had a variety of uh, medical issues. Um, and those include several different neurological problems that have required various sorts of surgical intervention and I also have a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So not only does that cause severe joint hypermobility, like for instance pretty much all of my joints do this, um, but more severely um, most of my surgical wounds and other wounds that I get dehiss, which means they open up. Um, they just, I can literally be sitting having dinner and I'll have an incision on my head from a brain surgery that I've had three or four years ago and it'll just pop open. Um, so it causes severe problems with needing to have so many surgeries because whenever I have surgery, the incision always opens up so I've had all sorts of wound care and um, reconstructive surgery and then I also have common variable immune deficiency syndrome which is um, when your immunoglobulin levels are uh, deficient or completely absent in some cases and that makes me very susceptible to infections so when the incisions open after my surgeries, I get infected and um, I usually require IV antibiotics. Um, for example, I've been on IV antibiotics now for 13 months for various infections and I also get intravenous immunoglobulin treatments um, twice a month every 14 days. Um, and that helps me to fight off some of the infections, but unfortunately not all of them. And Joanna basically is in a situation where she is very unique because she has two ailments. And one is causing a problem with correcting the other. Right. Right. Uh, she actually has, I guess, a uh, total of three. She has the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. She has the immune deficiency, and then she has a Chiari malformation, which is uh, a, a genital problem. And they've all had to, to, to be managed. And as a plastic surgeon, you've been uh, operating on her how many times? I've, I've been involved with the closure of the wounds. Uh, her condition makes it very difficult for her to, her to heal wounds, whether it be a surgical wound, whether it be a, a, a traumatic injury or whatever. And as a plastic surgeon, particularly plastic and reconstructive, we're in the business of moving tissue and helping to, uh, to heal things. And that's what we've been involved with. And I guess I've done uh, maybe three, three major surgeries on her and probably uh, six or seven others that have not been quite as major. Dr. Mullins and Dr. Brockman are pretty much the backbone of my medical team in Atlanta. Um, one of my neurosurgeons is in New York and one of my neurosurgeons is local, but um, Dr. Mullins and Dr. Brockman, um, without them, I would not be alive. And um, Look what's here. Payments are here. <laughs> well, the problems that she encounters, that we all encounter, are that she has more than one problem. And she doesn't have a simple issue that we can treat, deal with, she's got complicating 